This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. A decision by the OPEC Plus oil producer group last week to rein in output has driven up prices and could push the global economy into recession, the International Energy Agency said on Thursday. The relentless deterioration of the economy and higher prices sparked by an OPEC Plus plan to cut supply are slowing world oil demand, the Paris-based agency, which includes the United States and other top consumer countries, said. With unrelenting inflationary pressures and interest rate hikes taking their toll, higher oil prices may prove the tipping point for a global economy already on the brink of recession, it added in its monthly oil report. U.S. crude stocks rose by nearly 10 million barrels last week after another big release from government reserves, while distillate inventories fell sharply, the Energy Information Administration said on Thursday. Crude inventories rose by 9.9 million barrels in the week to October 7 to 439.1 million barrels, data showed, compared with analysts' expectations in a Reuters poll for a 1.8 million barrel rise. The bulk of that bump in commercial stocks came from a 7.7 million barrel release of reserves from U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve, SPR, though inventories without those reserves also rose. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. China, the world's biggest oil importer, has bought nearly all of the cargoes of Russia's Espo blend crude oil loading from the Far East port of Cosmino in September and October, according to traders and Refinitiv Acon data. In September, 2.3 million tons of Espo, a light crude valued by refiners for its high yield of diesel fuel, were sent to China, with the exception of one cargo of 100,000 tons shipped to Sri Lanka. In October, deliveries of Espo to China are set to exceed 2 million tons, but shipment data is still being updated and actual deliveries may be higher, said four traders who participate in the market. Oil prices traded about 2% higher on Thursday, reversing course as low levels of diesel inventory ahead of winter helped investors shrug off higher-than-expected stocks of crude and gasoline. Brent crude futures for December delivery rose $2.05 to $94.50 a barrel, a 2.2% gain, by 12.04 p.m. Eastern Time, 17.04 GMT. U.S. crude rose $1.95, or 2.2%, to $89.22 per barrel. Distillate stockpiles, which include diesel and heating oil, fell by 4.9 million barrels in the week ended October 7 to 106.1 million barrels, the lowest since May, the Energy Information Administration said, versus expectations for a drop of 2 million barrels. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The energy crisis in Europe presents a huge opportunity for Australia to export more green energy. The chief financial officer at Fortescue Future Industries, FFI, said on Thursday. European nations are pushing to boost renewable energy resources amid an energy crisis to move away from Russian gas. Countries are also looking for ways to cut energy consumption and fill their gas stores in preparation for cooler weather and any cutoff of Russian supplies. There is a huge opportunity for us to export green energy into Europe. They are absolutely demanding it, said Guy Dibel. Chief Financial Officer at Fortescue Future Industries, at the City Annual Investment Conference in Sydney. Iron ore futures slumped on Wednesday, with the Dalian benchmark contract hitting its lowest in two weeks, as intensified COVID-19 curbs in China and signals that its draconian zero-case approach will continue weighed on sentiment. Shanghai and other big Chinese cities have ramped up testing for COVID-19 as infections rose following this month's Golden Week holidays and ahead of the crucial Communist Party Congress beginning October 16. Speculations that top steel producer China would relax its zero-COVID policy after the Congress had recently helped push iron ore and steel prices higher. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. India will allow overseas broken rice shipments of 397,267 tonnes backed by letters of credit, LCs, issued before September 8, the government said in a notification on Wednesday, as a sudden ban on exports of the grain prevented the loading of cargoes. 
On September 8, India banned exports of broken rice as the world's biggest exporter of the grain tries to augment supplies and calm local prices after below-average monsoon rainfall curtailed planting. The surprise move trapped nearly 1 million ton of rice that was moved to the ports or was in transit before the government made the announcement. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.